Damn it. There we are. Yay. I got it. Um, what's, what's up, Manny? How's it going? It's, it's Friday, dude. I know. I can feel it too. <laughs> the, the work week caught up to you. Yep. Especially because hey. Thursday, Thursday, Friday, I work evenings. Oh, so, well, that was, you know, fun, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I work evenings too. I was up, up late last night getting, uh, stuff edited uh, for Breaking Geek and Cantina so I could get them released before we, we recorded this. And that way, Christine and I could do some uh, some anime reactions uh, later. So, yeah, anyways, uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Daily Cup of Genre. Usually daily, try to be daily here on the Genreverse, uh, here on the Genreverse Podcast Network, wherever you get your podcast from, and the Genreverse Podcast Network on YouTube. Uh, follow us on your favorite app, whatever you're listening on, Google, Spotify, Sounder.fm, who's our new uh, distributor as well um and of course if you're if you're watching us on youtube hit the red subscribe button we're up to 418 subs so yay thank you guys so much help us reach 500 and uh i am working on uh putting together a giveaway for one once we do hit 500 to one of our subscribers uh and it's a nice it's a nice one i think you guys will will dig it i just got to make sure all the uh eyes are dotted and and t's are are crossed before i uh discuss it uh i'm kyle that's manny our social media information is in front of you if you're watching uh if you're you're listening it's in the description boxes somewhere on your favorite app that's it man i'm done bye see you see you later (laughs) (laughs) um you know i was looking at the front page over at uh lrmonline.com and uh, a few things that kind of caught caught my eye were uh Interviews with, uh, or not interviews, excuse me, announcements uh, from uh, Jamie Lee Curtis about her uh, her uh, um, finale in ha- Halloween, if you if you will, what what looks to be the finale for her story, at least Halloween ends and it's it's release date. I saw uh, Umbrella Academy. I saw uh, a lot of a lot of fun little little things, but what really caught my eye, dude. <laughs> from GamesCon was the the killer clowns from outer space um and i i had seen it yesterday but i meant like seeing it on on the thing this this morning when i was looking at what to what i wanted to talk about because it's it's friday and we like to do friday frights here on the daily cup of genre because man, manny and i are both uh horror fans i gotta know mm-hmm. manny you wrote this up man are you a killer clowns from from outer space fan oh yeah yeah my daughter and i love that love that movie it, it's uh it's really fun it's weird it's wacky it's really twisted uh there's Mm -hmm. there's one instant there's one scene in particular that always really creeps me out the most and it's the one where uh they're at a uh families are at a restaurant and there's one of the killer clowns who is uh trying to um trying to persuade a kid to come outside Mm -hmm. and he has like a hammer behind his back that's always been like so freaking creepy to me like yeah like it. that it's, it's gross man <laughs> oh yeah absolutely um it it was a movie that definitely uh scares a lot of people and i'm sorry for for those that saw me pop up the uh picture i should have given you a, a clown warning but you, you heard us start talking about it so Seriously, you had to figure some, something was coming coming up but <laughs> um the game man these uh team survival uh uh games have been around f- for a while you can go back back to things like left for dead the original left for dead um but this is uh instead of you know four three or four pe- people surviving against ai you're you're playing uh potentially against other other players both as some as as clowns and some as as humans what are you thinking about this game man i'm not sure because it's the it's the same creators that they did um for um friday the 13th mm-hmm. i believe that's what it is and that game was it was okay but it wasn't it wasn't necessarily you, it, you i can't i couldn't play it for, 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 for very long it didn't really have mm-hmm. anything unique but i will say with more different with different characters and different weapons and also the fact that uh they have uh, the the original creators involved including the composers and and, and writers uh it could there could be something there uh, i think that the trailer d- did get a little bit more to it to um to say that yeah you know what this 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 could 
almost be an extension of the film something that we've never had either so <laughs> it's about time well i mean i don't i don't even know why it's well it's just a classic i know that i know this oh yeah is the, either the second or third year that universal studios horror nights is actually is doing a killer clowns area or maybe yeah. sorry uh so uh, you know it's it's cool it's cool to see it because it's um it's a classic and it's it's the reason why that film and it are, are two of the films that a lot of people of that generation blame for chlorophobia which is the fear <laughs> of clowns yeah um i it it makes me oh i was i was disappointed in the uh uh um last critters thing that they did which was like a series or something like that uh it didn't turn out so great a lot of people were disappointed to the point to where and i think it was like hard to find and i never even got a chance to see it which in and of itself if it's if it's like critters and you you don't even get a chance to to see it uh that's kind of disappointing um but it re uh, seeing this reminds me of you know all the like b-rated maybe even cd rated, <laughs> rated horror things that uh haven't gotten a, a chance to come back into the limelight you think of things like uh oh crap uh, attack of the killer tomatoes even which had its own cartoon back back in the day um i'm 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 wondering if we could see more uh things come from that you you've seen a lot of like uh odd uh uh, horror characters make their their way to like until dawn i think that's the one where where you try to survive x x amount of time with different killers and slashers and 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 stuff like that I, it's kind of cool man i'm 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 down with it do you have any other uh old old like uh b b horror movie uh movies that you like critters or whatnot uh not, nothing i can think of off the top of my head because i've I watched so much yeah, it's way too early for me. Um, what is there? Did you like Critters? Were you were you a Critters fan at all? It was okay. Like it wasn't wasn't necessarily something that that I like screamed for or anything or for like a remake or whatnot. What it's, about tra trauma stuff like uh, Poultry Geist? Have Have you taken a, a venture down there? Poultry Geist was fun. Uh, I know that I never was the one supposed supposed like horror icon that I've never really necessarily been keen to just because I find it kind of boring is uh, Freddy Cougar. Anything with Freddy Cougar was just kind of like, eh. I hate you. That's that's my that's that's my that's my boy, man. Yeah, <laughs> I prefer, I, I, yeah. I prefer so, Freddy to the to uh, Jason and and Michael. All, somebody all day long. somebody who has to you know venture into your dreams to get you is kind of a wuss if you ask me <laughs> what <laughs> you have dude that's the whole point point it's, you it, have it, to sleep like there's no there's no uh getting out of that you as a human being will have to at some point go to sleep and that that dude can can get you that dude can get you in your sleep when you're most vulnerable because there's nothing else you you can do you're you're asleep like it's frightening, man. And then also, uh, on just on that same note, I feel kind of a similar way with Chucky. It's kind of like it's a it's a doll man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not gonna lie. At, at like some point, it's like yeah, they're they're super you know st strong and stuff, but like fireproof safe. <laughs> just yeah, shut them in a fireproof safe and yeah. just you know then you cement that and then you put that in a in a steel. Uh, box and then cement that steel box with cemented safe in it and you're you're set man no, yeah, well then no you more don't, worrying then about you don't, chucky yeah but then you don't have a horror movie and then i, I don't know if you <sighs> can count this as a b-list kind of or c-list movie but it it only it only gets so much love which is the reason i'll bring it up is a film like um jeepers creepers that was kind of fun. i like that I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a, a b b horror it definitely tried to be a, a mainstream yeah, horror yeah, movie and it's a it's a decent it's a decent i one. think it's, it's decent yeah it yeah. has it has a it has a another film coming out very soon so um yeah i don't i'm not sure how they'll exactly they'll do. See, do you see how excited <laughs> you are about it <laughs> like I, it was decent like but then then again if if someone came out and one of my uh, one of my favorite slasher films of of all time is is uh um excuse me the the rise of uh behind the mask the rise of leslie uh vernon this brilliant i think i've recommended it to you don't know if you've watched it yet have you watched it yet man no, i haven't seen it you're son of a 
hate hate you. I, I don't uh, even anyways, know if you've actually recommended it to me. I have. I, I've recommended it. Uh, it used to be on Shutter. I'm not sure if it is now, but this is this is worth paying. All right, guys. Behind the mask, the rise of Leslie Vernon. Uh, it is this dark comedy uh, horror uh, slasher in which uh, all of the slashers were real people freddy uh mike uh jason but they're not supernatural they used tricks and and uh train uh training and all these things they're in the business of of good versus evil helping to keep like balance and this is not some big spiritual movie or something like that it's just the the premise of why those those people were out there killing and uh you're you're following a a college film crew on their uh, documentary for the next mass murderer, uh, Leslie Vernon, and uh, it it goes at one point that it goes from one one of the just most most fun uh, 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 slasher uh, uh, dark comedies to an absolute amazing top of the line straight up straight up horror slasher flick. Uh, I cannot recommend. Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Ver- Vernon, enough. I'm actually trying to pull up the, the trailer right now uh, to show you, Manny. Um, I should be able to... Manny's face will freeze because that's what happens when I share screen, so freeze. All right, check this out. And there's some uh, good horror uh, cameos, like um, Tangerina or whatever from Poltergeist, right there. Mm-hmm. And you get some talking heads music. That's funny. Mm-hmm. Mr. Freddy, Freddy himself cameos in mm-hmm. here. You won't like what you see. I promise you that. Sure what they got filming those cameras, boys? I cannot stand here and let this happen. Don't you get it? We're in this now. We're part of this equation. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it is a 2000. It's a 2006 movie, and it is it is freaking amazing. I cannot recommend that movie enough. Uh, the trailer, like I said, it's a 2006 trailer, so it looks trailers are fun. It looks trailers fun. are odd from from any time before current time and that's for every time 90s trailers looked odd to us in the in the 2000s but that that movie i'm telling you when 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 the switch happens from that that dark comedy to the slasher flick you're just you're thrown it's great it's great can't recommend it enough <laughs> <laughs> love it love it um yeah man uh looking elsewhere on the front page of lrmonline.com the only other thing that really kind of caught my eye was uh, Matt Shackman uh, seems to be a, a name coming up for, for the Fantastic Four movie. And for, for those of you that might not recognize that name, he did uh, WandaVision. Now, you and I have had various views on, on recent Marvel uh, uh, projects, mm-hmm. um, Phase 4. Um, 
what did you think of WandaVision? Here we are, what, well, well over a year after afterwards. Would you, uh, how, how do you feel about that and, and Shackman potentially taking Fantastic Four? Wanda, WandaVision had a really strong start. And then I kind of, it just, to me, it kind of lost steam towards the end. Um, I know that uh, me and others uh, kind of were really disappointed with kind of that lackluster ending per se. Mm-hmm. I think even probably the end credits were the was a little bit more exciting than everything that happened in that last episode. So um, yeah, it's not it's not necessarily one of my f- favorite Marvels um, series, but at the same time, I know that it does hold a a special place because it was the first and I didn't I remember how excited I was uh, with especially with those first few episodes and even that that one with the homage to like uh modern family and uh mm-hmm. um uh Malcolm in the middle Malcolm in the middle thank you so yeah it, it's it's weird. and also I think Catherine Hurd did a really good job at kind of holding it together in some places just she, she's just a great actress so Catherine Hahn Catherine Hahn yeah yeah so so yeah i i don't it's um if, if that's what they, then again hopefully they're they're gonna they're gonna be reverting a little bit more to the to the leash that that uh that they had before and not and not have another tied up situation from the last storm movie so regardless of who they have directing it should be pretty pretty much a cookie cutter marvel studios film like we've like we've seen in the past that's kind of the thing also about Marvel Studios is that when they when they pick directors for certain films, most of the time, and there are exceptions, it's mm-hmm. they they pretty much follow the same, uh, the, the same kind of stencil. So it's, yeah. it's not it's not like it necessarily matters too much. Shang Chi is an exception. <laughs> uh, Eternals is a bad exception. Um, so uh, and then there's um... everything else in, in the middle. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I liked WandaVision. I still say that overall, I think most most people were disappointed in uh, the the reveals and there not being a certain person. Mephisto. That's the, that, yeah, it, yeah, that's their and fault. I think, <laughs> yeah, that it partially, no, 100% is. And, and I think you even agreed with me. We we both had I had said or I had said and you, you, you had agreed that uh, – the use of this much uh, Mephisto, Mephisto material without the actual character is kind of sliding the the writers of all of all of those stories that they they borrowed from from JMS's uh, uh, and I don't want to give JMS any any uh, uh, undue credit because we we know that uh, Mr. Joey Q uh, Casada had made some uh, drastic changes to One More Day allegedly. Um, but you know, one one more day used Mephisto. You have all the West Coast uh, Avengers stuff using the guys used in in a lot of these these uh, uh, stories, and then you just leave him out. Like it's it's a major part, and I I don't know. It just it didn't sit right with with me. And 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 writers get such little recognition for for their their stories being used on screen. You know, people. Yeah, it it was sad, but I I still like the show overall. I think it was one of the better executed shows. While you might not that yes, because like of, how yeah. or what was executed, it was executed well. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I I, I don't care if Mephisto was in it. Um, that wasn't my issue with it. Um, yeah. But uh, you, uh, I think fans got a little too. Uh, kind of, did uh, they got tunnel vision, and that's all they thought it was, and yeah. and they thought the show was probably going to, like you said, reveal a lot more than it did, and uh, that's their own fault for thinking that, <laughs> that way. I'm not, I'm not going to put that on Marvel Studios because they did have, they had a cohesive story, um, yeah. and they told it fairly well. I know that even down the line, there's a, some other shows that have bigger, pro- a lot bigger problems with, so um, that's that's not necessarily um, a bad thing. Just um i'm just real curious to see how it's going to how, how's it going to play out because for now uh, i know on the other side of the pond uh wb they're they're looking at um the was it the director or producer um 
uh, of uh, Lego Batman or something like that, or the Lego movie, is the one who, who, um, who they, they're they're probably going to be their Feige, uh, Dan Lin. Thank you. Uh. Uh, so, uh, and I'm just like, uh, I had that that uh, that Guardians of the Guardians moment where it's like, who? <laughs> um, but apparently he's the producer behind it lego movie who, and that should who, who the hell's james gunn doesn't matter you're gonna love it shut up and deal <laughs> <laughs> anyway anything they should make i i thought i thought I mean, maybe he just doesn't want to do it or something but i thought jj abrams would have would have been a good name to to Man, take over he, he is not the name you you want on anything these days people blame blame him for ruining star trek even though i like the kelvin timeline i, I do not have an issue with his star trek films and the i think i know star trek, everything about star go ahead the thing with star trek is, is that star trek will always be better as a tv show i yeah. don't ever feel that it necessarily works too well as a movie and that's okay um you can see that so and so uh I kind of feel the same way. The reverse thing about Star Wars, almost. That, mm, you no, don't that like works. Them as shows. <laughs> no, I, I, I haven't necessarily said I, I find, I find, I'm, and I'm very fond of any of the shows. Uh, some of them are okay, but they're, they're, the movies are, are just better. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. And then also, I don't, I don't blame him for uh, Star Wars either because they should have. Disney should have had, had a plan. Yeah, <laughs> had a, had a, and, and not had a, had a plan. And now that all these different people put their hands in it, and and then not have a, a cohesive three films, you, you know, um, or or maybe pick pick the right hands to have in it, because <laughs> yeah. you guys you guys pick some like like uh uh freaking what's his name did Last Jedi Ryan Johnson Ryan Johnson had no business. Uh, directing anything related to military combat without serious um, advisors because th that is some of the worst uh, combat ever. Sure, it looks pretty, but all of it is just awful. The the cutting, the editing, the editing, having uh, Finn and Rose be able to be left out in front of all of that military equipment, all those troops, and none of them shot them on their their way way back uh to the to the to the base um the the bombers like yeah sure every shot you you made looked good but it it also looked freaking stupid <laughs> i would agree with you there so <laughs> it looked stupid so, so yeah so yeah right so man according to white roman right man or woman there <laughs> so according according to the hollywood reporter uh the role would encompass for dan lynn would encompass overseeing not just the films but television as well with him reporting directly to Zaslav and and uh bypassing actually separate division heads which includes warner pictures and uh hbo hbo max chief as well as warner brothers tv um chair so this would put all the control of dc properties in lynn's hand which is i think kind of like what K uh, kevin feige has anyway over at over at Marvel Studios, he's just in charge of Marvel Studios, regardless of what it is. Um, yeah, including comics, I believe. Yeah, he's um, got he's got. There's there's a little bit of of uh, extra middle management, I think, on the comic side, yes. mm -hmm. but he still has uh, a hand on on that fight. Which does. Yeah. which, regardless of which company uh, you tell, um, r regardless of which big company we're talking about, they've definitely thrown comics under the bus for recently oh yeah which is a very which is a real shame um, I mean, comic sales are awful these days and god we, we might not even have dc comics publishing hold on shush up oh we are uh, we might not that. even have the comics publishing like month monthly regularly for for many much for much that, more you might get going, to just they're not going away that's yeah, no I'm, I'm saying you might get to where it's just a you, you won't have like your 30 stories going on at at once any anymore i think there there's going to be drastic cuts especially at at dc to where you might only see 10 15 books a month uh do the sales are the sales are awful I, i'm they, not i'm not going to go to make a claim like that um, I would not be surprised by it. I'm not saying I've got any uh, word on that. I'm saying numbers-wise and the fact that people keep trying to 
uh, uh, sell off DC or they're at least talk about selling D. No, no one's going to buy uh, DC without uh, being able to get in on on the movie and TV uh, money. No one. You you could offer them to to Amazon right now. You can take over all of the DC comics, but we still get uh, Warner Brothers still gets all of the the say so on movies, TVs, first ask or or whatever. However you wanted to do it, Amazon's going to say no. Why? Because there's no money in it. There, there's no money in it. And with them bleeding money the way that they are, it would it would not shock me at all to watch publishing take a, a dramatic drop to like I said, fifteen books a month of, of like the biggest titles the the occasional specials and and annuals but the the days of 40 50 books you know every couple of months no i think i think that's going away man i there's just no no money in it but and yeah anyways <laughs> so uh i i mean some of the one of one of the early names that that i thought that that was a strong contender was uh greg Rolanti, and i thought he probably mm-hmm. was the right guy to do it uh, especially with everything he's done for the TV side, because they they for they had a they had a really good run. Uh, they had yeah they had quite the variety of uh, of shows with with different characters and different story arcs and and big events. And with, so with what the money and resource with the resources that they gave they gave him to to kind of really oversee these a lot of these projects as a you know producer. Uh, they they did really well. They got they got even to something like Infinite Crisis, where they even they even involved they were able to involve Ezra Miller for for a shot, yeah. and they had uh, uh, Kevin Conroy showed up as Batman mm-hmm. for uh, for an episode, and you had uh, Brandon Ruth show up, yeah, who, who had played uh, who had played uh, the character in um and uh, had played Superman in Superman Returns. Yeah, that that movie, man. It had you a mean lot. the the Donner esque film everyone said that they wanted after Man of Steel, <laughs> but yet they they ignored it when it first came out. That Superman Returns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is he's uh, Ralph. Uh, Ralph was a, I think a good Superman. And then uh, they had they had um I God I can't remember his his actual name from Smallville show up too. Tom Welling. Tom Welling, thank you. Or Wellings. Kane. I don't know if there's an Lucifer. Or not. Um. Yeah so um it, it it's interesting and just well honestly on. at this point i don't even care if they bring in amy pascal just uh <laughs> oh god don't just give don't. me i wouldn't w- wish amy <laughs> on my worst en- enemy amy and and uh kennedy both my my god i know i just wanted that reaction um just just oh. just like do something It'll stick to my stomach already because <laughs> like every every time you hear something lately it's it's something as stupid, and I say stupid too. Uh, like uh, Warner Brothers can only release two movies this year. That's a, that's as much as I can. Yeah, release. and yeah. it's like, uh, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> this is why some movies. But uh, I, I don't. I'd actually also. Uh, they do have some good reasoning uh, for pushing back the Flash. Oh, not the Flash. Um, Aquaman, and that is, you know, we've heard that they they've d- done some some reshoots with like Ben Affleck and things like that. And especially if with the restructuring, if they want to kind of change the direction a little bit, I don't blame them. So if the movie's going to be stuck in post a little bit longer, uh, you, you know, that's, that's fine. And then yeah. also, um, also I'm very thankful that uh, Shazam doesn't have to go up against uh, Avatar anymore uh, during yeah. the same, during those same days. Uh, be, one of the, one of the bigger issues was that, if you're going up against Avatar, even if it, they're not being released on the same day, Disney was still going to have a hold on all of the IMAX screens. Yes. Uh, so um, I, I think that that was a good move. So like, while I'm not sure if that whole uh, Disney, the, uh, Warner Brothers can only release two movies thing is is uh, true or not, the fact of the matter is the movies, they have good reasons to delay the movies just a little bit further back especially as they're trying to figure out the flash which uh there has been no uh uh word of that moving a forward or back yeah but i think what does kind of annoy me is that they have taken uh two or three projects including house party for example which i thought which was originally said was going to be pulled and now that's a theatrical release mm-hmm. they're going to be they're, they're going to be trying to 
put feature films in theaters, which I 100% agree with. Yeah. But with that said, then give me goddamn Batwoman Bat from Batgirl. Ne- Batgirl next year. Yeah. <laughs> and and That's I know I know that actors and actresses are, are are clamoring for like, hey, just like, come on, man, like you're doing it, you're doing it for a dumb movie like House Party, like you, and. Just why why doesn't Warner Brothers do do this then auction it? You're telling me I I almost guarantee you, <laughs> I almost guarantee you you guys could auction that movie off for more than nine ninety million because you would get a group of of people together, and you could even put some stipulation on it like if you you auction it off it can be released but. You know, Warner Brothers makes X amount of of money off of it. I I, I don't know, but it, I I almost think like you could you could get ninety million dollars out of a few thousand uh, high end Hollywood elites. You know what I'm saying, right? Writers, directors, actors, act actresses, all come coming together. I don't know if if there's any uh, legal way to do that or what the the actual finances could be, but I, I have to think like if it's if it's that big of a deal there there's got to be 90 people in Hollywood that could give up a million each. <laughs> you know who's hurting for content? Netflix is hurting for content. Uh, they can't yeah. afford 90 million. No, no, it doesn't even have to be 90 million. But you you do you do a you do what you said and, and you you kind of nest, you, you do the whole rent it out thing. Yeah. Let it stream on yeah. on Peacock or on Netflix. Do a uh and and I know this is, this is going to require a little bit more investment, but do a um, physical media release. Yeah, straight and, it's just classic straight to home video. Oh, hey, you know what? That that could be a thing too. Uh, yeah, no, but re- dude, dude, it it really could. And I I I have to say the the money issue stems back from. I mean, look at their quarter two earnings. What was it two billion dollar loss or something like mm-hmm. that? I I can't remember the exact number. Um, WB Discovery uh q2 losses but uh the the fact they didn't run out of of a loss of 3.4 billion and that included a a 1 billion dollar uh write-off for restructuring uh charges um it wasn't like they they ran out of of money because of their their recent choices uh Mm -hmm. these movies were pushed guys they were already looking at what they could push this is part of that that trimming the the fat thing uh the the actions of the last few weeks will be felt later but yeah definitely definitely uh worth worth noting that warner brothers was in dire straits and and that goes back to our our point on earlier conversations this 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 week where we were like we get what they're doing and why they're doing it we we both feel like a lot of the cuts are too much too too fast but the one thing most people can agree on where's the me- messaging because right now you've got a bunch of of keyboard idiots keyboard war- warriors headline readers that all they read is the headline that are literally out there thinking that you know haha Warner Brothers getting getting what they they deserved not being able to release movies now no guys they they weren't able to release movies to to begin with and it it also makes you kind of wonder who else's books are this deep in the in the in the red like who else is is suffering like Probably this Sony. right now you know <laughs> yeah, so Sony who doesn't even have a streaming uh option um, uh, well but they do sell a lot yeah. of things to, they um, they do the they do other... Amazon and Netflix mm-hmm. buy a, a lot of stuff the the Horizon uh Zero Dawn and um going to going to Netflix and the last of uh last of us on mm-hmm. on hbo so yeah i mean but yeah i i will <sighs> say that i am i am pretty excited that their slate for 2013 actually looks pretty pretty good in 2023 now, yeah don't send us back to 20, 2013 man he come out 20 2023 <laughs> uh so because because you'll have you'll have fury of the gods you'll have yeah um you, you'll have uh aquaman also, the, those HBO films I'm talking, I'm talking about House Parties from New Line, and then also another one that was only going to be an HBO Max ex- exclusive. Now we'll be heading to theaters: uh, Evil Dead Rise. Yeah, uh, and then also um, in the fall, uh, just another another Conjuring franchise film, The Nun Two, will be released, and those films always do pretty well. Um, and then they also have another February date that they haven't filled yet, so that's going to be interesting mm. to see. 
what what they do with that. And then I think we're supposed to get a flash film, the flash film in 2023. June that, of 2023. So is... that hasn't, there's been no change to that made yet. So we're going to have to assume that it will still be for that year. Um, so regardless, you know, they got, they got a lot of stuff, little things going on and they got, they'll have obviously other, other films. Uh, but I think that uh, a lot of times um, there's a lot of, sensationalism as far as what can grab a headline and then people also jump the gun to uh, to write them so that they can get clicks uh i know yeah. that that's a that's a thing <laughs> and so yeah we'll, we'll we'll see we'll see i think next year will be a good a good i guess measuring point to see if, if they're if they're making at least we can get first reactions as to the moves they're making uh, because they'll have their the streaming services combined, and yeah. and so there's there's a lot there's a lot going on, and I, it just it just I get I think like like you're talking we were talk, we're talking about the other day, and now it's just that when you know when you're cleaning up, uh, when you're when you're spring cleaning, a lot of times you have to uh, move desks and and uh shelves and you weren't aware how dirty things really yeah and and you have to you have to take everything out of the fridge before you can clean it and so you make out what's still good and viable you make a bigger mess to in in order to clean it all up so it's um it's it's interesting i think that's what's happening right now it just seems it just seems like a huge huge mess but they're they they got they got to go through it and and uh that takes time money and energy (laughs) <laughs> and so yeah, um, uh, I, you know, as, as much as we react to it, because we're fans of these things. Yeah, uh, we we get it. Also, we understand that it, it's it, it may be for the better, because who knows what could have happened if because this debt was never not going to be there. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of who owned it. So if you would have kept yeah. the debt to the irresponsible group who um was yeah promising all these things but with with no uh no funds behind it god it's almost like we 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 see this in a government somewhere where they're like oh the the answer to to spending problems is more spending (laughs) throw more money at it it'll be fine (laughs) throw more throw more money at it yeah craziness anyways um i i am surprised we managed to turn our our uh uh what i thought was going to barely make 20 minutes into a nearly 40 minute episode it's always <laughs> it's always good to get into a uh, good conversation so, so i hope some people discovered the chapter with the with the best con- conversation stuff we we had going on uh going on today uh guys check out lrmonline.com every who Every day for all of your all of your entertainment news needs and opinions, uh, the podcasts, celebrity interviews, all of that are, are available there. Uh, written uh, reviews, trailers, leaks, rumors, uh, all 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 go up on lrmonline.com. The podcasts are available in in uh, video format, in addition to all of the great apps like uh, Spotify and Apple and Google, uh, Sounder.fm. Like I said, our new new distributor. But on on YouTube, in addition to uh, Daily Cog, Breaking Geek, and uh, AVR, Marvel multi, uh, Marvel Multiverse Mayhem, and the Cantina, you also get uh, AVR Squared, which is anime uh, reactions, and uh, we're doing. Uh, classroom of the elite and violet evergarden right now and then uh uh the genre shot uh trailer reactions which are always fun so yeah hit the red subscribe button leave some comments thumbs ups and downs if you must uh let us know what we can do what topics you're interested in us discussing and yeah manny anything else to anything else to say nope all right guys we will see you next week bye